Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and I've always had a lot of respect for Muammar Gaddafi, leader of Libya. With his oil wealth, he gave his people the best standard of living in Africa. Free education, free health care, no taxes, $50,000 to each newly married couple, interest-free loans, and the UN says one of the best human rights records in the world. So it offended me when the mainstream media paraded all these lies about Gaddafi being a tyrant and his people killing his people and bombing indiscriminately. You know, I was wondering, when are they going to trot out the incubator sto baby story that worked for Saddam Hussein? Anyway, Russia said, hey, we didn't see any planes doing anything. And guess what? You'd expect 50-50 men and women dead people. It was 97%, 3%, 97% men, 3% women. So there was no indiscriminate bombing. Another lie. So... I could tell it was a lie when you noticed the pygmy press are there, the midgets and the dwarf reporters. Every shot is always from really down low looking up at a lot of sky. Take a look. Okay, these articles are from March the 3rd to March the 8th. And notice this one here could have been shot in a Hollywood back lot. Oh, two guys. One with heavy artillery. I wonder if he kept it in his basement. Oh, down to one guy. Prove this wasn't shot in Hollywood. Okay, a two-man army. And they've got an anti-aircraft gun. Must have kept it in their basement. Oh, one guy with a bazooka. Tell me this couldn't have been a Hollywood lot. And where'd a guy get a bazooka? Four guys jumping away to avoid the shrapnel. Not knowing that shrapnel's supposed to go faster than they can jump. So this is just a squib, a phony explosive. Actually, the journalists might be getting hurt too. So, fraud. Oh, and one more guy, probably the same ak gun. Oh, and three more guys helping him. So I decided I was going to read Colonel Gaddafi's little green book into a video so you can watch and find out the kind of man that our assassins, Obama, Cameron, Sarkozy, Harper, are trying to kill. Now, I've got his whole book read at my site. If you want to hear it all, it's two and a half hours, and it's at johntermel.com slash gathafi.wmv. So, you can go hear the whole thing, but this is part one about Mr. Gaddafi's thoughts of what's wrong with democracy and how it can be fixed to give us true direct democracy. So, here's the opening to the video. Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and since my country, Canada, is involved with the United States, France, and Britain in bombing Libya's infrastructure and destroying their schools and their hospitals, and I've been watching over the years Gaddafi's career, and I noticed how many times in the past they framed him for the Berlin disco bombing and then Reagan killed his daughter in a bombing and that wasn't true. And then they framed him for Lockerbie and then that frame up fell apart and they had to let Mag Al Magathi go. And now we hear the same series of lies about dictator and killing civilians that we heard in the past in the run-ups to the Iraq wars that I have to say that this dictator is the only dictator I know who ever wrote a book on democracy. Now, given Obama, Sarkozy, Cameron, Harper are trying to kill this man, I think it's only right that someone at least tell you what his ideas were all about and let you judge for yourself the kind of men that our thugs are trying to kill. All right, this is from Muammar L. Gaddafi's Green Book. And notice how he spells his name. I wonder why none of the media in the West ever spell his name the way he spells his name. The Green Book, the solution to the problem of democracy, the solution to the economic problem, the social basis of the third universal theory, part one. The solution to the problem of democracy. The authority of the people, the political basis of the third <clears throat> universal theory. The authority of the people, dictator. The instrument of government, 
The instrument of government is the primary political problem facing human communities. Failing to find the final and democratic solution to this political problem, many societies are bearing the burden of its far-reaching consequences and ramifications. The Green Book presents the ultimate solution to this problem. Well, we'll see. All existing political systems in the world today are the product of the struggle for power between potential instruments of government. This struggle, whether conducted by peaceful or armed means, may be a class struggle, a sectarian or tribal strife, or a power struggle between individual adversaries vying for political ascendancy. It invariably culminates in the victory of one instrument of government, whether it be an individual, a sect, a political party, or a social class, and the defeat of the people the defeat of true democracy. Political struggle which culminates in the victory of a candidate obtaining 51% of the total votes of the electorate establishes a dictatorship in the seat of power garbed in the disguise of democracy. It is in fact a dictatorship because 49% of the electorate would then be governed by an instrument of government they did not vote for and which has been imposed upon them. This is the essence of dictatorship. Moreover, a political conflict may culminate in the rise to power of an instrument of government representing a minority of the electorate. Well, that's what's going on. Such an outcome is the product of an electoral process whereby the votes of the electorate are distributed among the number of candidates of whom one would obviously obtain a number of votes larger than the number obtained separately by any one of the other candidates. Yet, though the sum total of the votes scored by these other candidates would be the largest and represent a sweeping majority, the candidate who independently scored the highest percentage of the ballot, which is comparatively the lowest, is legally considered a winner in a democratically conducted election. In actual fact, such an outcome heralds the rise of a dictatorship in the misleading guise of democracy. Such is the reality of political systems of government prevalent in our world today. Sheer dictatorship falsifying true democracy. So, what's his method of rule going to be? Parliaments. The institution of parliament in the world today is the backbone of modern traditional democracy. Yet, such an institution is a misrepresentation of the people and parliamentary systems are a contrived solution to the problem of democracy. Since democracy as a system of government <clears throat> means the power of the people and not power vested in elected members of an assembly in the name of the people, as such, the mere existence of parliaments underlies the absence of the people, for democracy can only exist with the presence of the people and not in the presence of representatives of the people. <clears throat> If a parliament is formed from members who are followers of one particular political party as a result of their electoral victory, then this parliament is not representative of the people, but of this particular party. The executive body it will appoint will be the executive power of this party, and not of the people. Similarly, a parliament of proportional representation, whose seats are distributed to a, the different parties according to their percentage success in the vote, is not representative of the people. Its members do not represent the people, but their parties. And the ruling power established by this coalition of the parties is the power of the coalition and not of the people. Under such systems, the people are the prey fought over by the predators. Instruments of government compete in their power struggle for the votes of the people they in turn neglect and exploit. Assemblies whose seats are allocated to heirs and other privileged appointees cannot be similarly categorized. They lack even a semblance of democracy. Moreover, the electoral system in the so-called democratic forms of government is a demagogic practice in the literal sense of the world. It is based on propaganda campaigns aimed at winning over the constituents and involves buying and manipulating votes. This produces closed election campaigns which the poor cannot afford to participate in and thus the rich are always elected. But a political party is not in any respect a democratic instrument. 
It is an organization formed by individuals who share the same interests, ideas, culture, place, or doctrine. They come together to form a political party so that they may realize their interests or impose their ideas or the might of their doctrine on society as a whole with the intention of seizing power as a means to implement their political program. Democratically, none of these individuals or members of a political party should rule over a whole people who constitute diverse interests, opinions, dispositions, places, and beliefs. A political party is a dictatorial instrument of government which enables those with the same ideas or interests to rule over the people as a whole. In actual fact, the party constitutes only a small minority. In their fight against each other, political parties seldom engage in armed strife. Instead, they usually resort to mudslinging tactics to discredit one another. In order to rule, the opposition party must defeat the existing instrument of government. To do so, the opposition must undermine the government's achievements and cast doubts on its plans, even if these plans were beneficial to society, to prove the incompetence of the current governing instrument. Thus, the party which is supposed to exercise power in the interest of all the people is actually the arch enemy of a large proportion of the people, namely the party or parties of the opposition and their supporters. There is no difference between a political party's struggle for power and a tribal or sectarian struggle for power. However, the people are neither a class, party, tribe, nor sect, for these represent only a section of the people and constitute a minority in society. If either a class, party, tribe, or sect dominates a society, then the system of government becomes a dictatorship. Moreover, in a true democracy, there is no justification for one social class to suppress other classes in order to serve its own interests. Likewise, there is no justification for one political party to suppress other parties for its own benefit, not for one tribe or sect to do the same. Condoning such actions means spurning the principles of democracy and justifies the use of force. A society torn apart by party wrangling is no different from a society torn apart by tribal or sectarian conflicts. Referendums. Referendums make a mockery of democracy. They are only allowed to select one of two words, either yes or no. Individuals who respond with a no should be able to state their reasons. Similarly, individuals who respond with a yes should be given the opportunity to justify their agreement. Which path, then, should human communities follow in order to be permanently rid of tyranny and dictatorship? Says the supposed dictator, trying to get rid of dictatorships? Geez, have they lied to us about Gaddafi? It lies in finding an instrument of government other than those subject to the struggle for power. But is an instrument of government which encompasses the people as a whole. In other words, we're looking for an instrument of government which neither represents the people or acts on their behalf. There can be no representation of the people, and representation is a fraud. If this instrument of government were found, the problem would be solved, and true people's democracy would be established. Says Dictator Gaddafi. <laughs> In this way, humankind would bring to an end the eras of tyranny and dictatorship, replacing them with the will of the people. The Green Book presents the ultimate solution to the problem of the instrument of governance and indicates the course that the masses should follow if they are to leave behind the eras of dictatorship and enter an era of genuine democracy. This new theory is based on the authority of the people and it renounces representation or delegation of authority. It leads to the achievement of direct, orderly, inefficient democracy unlike previous attempts at direct democracy, which proved to be inapplicable, as they had disregarded the need for people's organization at the lower levels of society.